Don't forget what I said. There will be losses in life. There will be issues in life. And there are reasons why people lose things. People lose opportunity. People lose helpers. Three ways people lose things. Number one, people lose things by manipulation. When you are manipulated, you lose it through manipulation, through immaturity. The third reason why some people lose things is that life happens. There are some things, whether you are matured, whether you are not manipulated, when the time comes for there to be a split, water will find its level. I think if you study your Bible, you discover that every man that was great lost something. Adam lost his son. Are you aware? Adam lost his son, Abel. He lost his son. Learn to manage losses. Learn to manage losses. There are many people who do not understand that in life you will lose a lot of things. It's a revelation and a truth that you have to deal with. Even the almighty God lost angels. God is still God. But he lost angels. In life there will be a lot of losses. The problem you have is that you think that everything you have now, everyone you know now, everyone around you now must be with you for life. It's an irony. It's an irony. Sometimes you will lose friendship, but don't lose the lesson. Even if you lose friendship, learn the lessons. And the word became flesh and dwelt among them. I have no shadow of doubt that this video is going to be a blessing on your life and your ministry. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, click the bell notification, and give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Watch a full video next to this. Not everybody will be with you for life. Not everything will be yours for life. You will lose opportunities. Don't, don't bank your life. The reason why some of us are so pained is that you, you plan your life, you hold on to certain opportunities, certain expectations, you put your life on them. Somebody is going to get a visa and his whole life is on the embassy. So by the time he's disappointed, he's refused. For him to pray, two weeks he has not prayed. Because he's not aware that with, without the embassy, life goes on. He's not aware that if he goes to the embassy, he gets the visa, glory to God, doesn't get it, glory to God. When you don't bank your life on a thing, you are not disappointed when it fails. Sometimes, hear this, hear this, hear this. Sometimes you may lose what you think you can't live without so that you gain what you can live with. Sometimes you may lose what you think you can't live without so that you gain what you can live with. There are some things you talk you can never live without. God will make you lose them. Sometimes, you see, you must learn to manage losses. And be okay. Look at this church, for example. There are people that left this church to another church. They are not here anymore. And there are some people that left another church to this church. That's life. So to be funny of me, to now feel bad about people who let, I mean, there are people that will leave. Even if Jesus becomes the pastor of this church, there are people that will not attend Jesus' church. Because Jesus will be too spiritual for them. How can somebody be teaching and teaching and teaching for three days, no food? There are some people that will react. Because Jesus is become that's the truth they will find fault why do you think that the, some of the disciples were not married Paul was not married they did one problem for he that is not married careth of the things of the Lord but he that is married careth of the things of this world so it's life so I'll now sit back okay give an instance there are people that this ministry for example why do we have students here we pay their rent their school fees we supported them and as soon as they stepped out of this vicinity they forgot about the ministry yes they don't identify with the ministry anywhere they are they turn their back on the ministry but there are people that all they got from this place was a healing and wherever they are in the world today they are celebrating the ministry sometimes when you focus on the things you've lost instead of the things you gain it means
means you are saying that you don't value gains. It's like, let, let me give you a scenario. Let me give you a scenario. For example, let me give you a scenario. Maybe somebody has a birthday coming up. You have a birthday. You are celebrating your birthday. And you post your picture on your birthday. And you say, you say, I give God the glory on your picture. Is your picture is your platform. It is your hand that typed, I give God the glory. You posted it. Somebody will come into that place and insult you. Which can give God the glory? <laughs> you give God which glory. They will come there and they will insult you. But guess what happens? You will have more than a lot of people who will thank God with you and give him all the glory. What do some people will do? They will pick that one person that abused them and reply. You didn't reply all those who appreciated you. you, are, you know, what you do that you are trying to tell all those who appreciated you that you don't value their appreciation. Jesus said, Woe unto you if all men speak well of you. If everybody celebrates you, Jesus said, Woe! When everybody's around you and they are saying you are doing the right thing, means everyone around you is pretending you are in trouble. There are some people that will not like you because they don't even like themselves. Some people have a problem with themselves. You posted a picture and you say you are looking good. Some of them have posted their picture, they deleted, they posted, they deleted, they put. I'm not even fine, sir. They deleted it. And you're expecting somebody like that. <laughs> So now say that you are looking good, you are in trouble. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So let the I don't bother myself. I, I just gave the church scenario as a truth to let you know. Don't let you see how your mind functions can affect your health. There are people that live strong, young, healthy because they guard their minds. Please understand this. There is nobody. The only thing you must be bothered about when you lose is your salvation. There is nothing else. Because human beings are not what you think they are. That's the truth. That's the truth. When you have that understanding, you don't have a problem. Don't forget I said, there will be losses in life. There will be issues in life. And there are reasons why people lose things. People lose opportunity. People lose helpers. Three ways people lose things. Number one, people lose things by manipulation. When you are manipulated, you lose it. When God connects a person, a personality to your life, and that kind of favor has not happened at all in your family, the devil will manipulate you to destroy it with your hands. There are many people who work in offices by themselves. Someone said to me that he wants to resign. I said, why? He said, he didn't like the way the boss talked to him. I said, pay your salary? He said, the man. Who gave you an appointment letter? The man. Who gave you, who put you in, in charge of this department? You the man. And you don't like the way he spoke to you? Say yes, but you like his salary. Manipulation. True manipulation. True immaturity. Many people have lost opportunity by not being mature. Immaturity. Immaturity. The third reason why some people lose things is. You want to hear this? You want to hear this? The third reason why some people lose things is that life happens. There are some things, whether you are matured, whether you are not manipulated, when the time comes for there to be a split, water will find this level. Refusal to grow is a problem. When people are growing and you are not growing, they will leave you behind. That's the truth. When people are growing and you are not growing, they will leave you behind. Learn. Learn. You know, some of us, eh, let me tell you something. The reason you are hurt at people is because Expecting people to be kind to you because you are kind to them is like expecting a lion not to eat you because you don't eat lions. <laughs> you hear what 
what I said. You see a lion in the zoo. And you tell the lion, I don't eat lion, so don't eat me. So expecting people to be kind to you because you are kind to them is like expecting a lion not to eat you up because you don't eat lion. Expecting people to be nice and pay you back that same niceness you paid them is like expecting a snake to just greet you because you avoid snakes. There are people that will be cruel. I've told you the story before. I've told you the story of how animals were crossing the river. They were crossing the river. As they were crossing, other animals were crossing. A scorpion could not cross. The scorpion could not swim. The scorpion looked at the tortoise and said to the tortoise, please carry me on your back. The tortoise said, no. When I bring out my neck on the water, you will sting my neck. You can't sting my back because of the scales, but you will sting my neck. The scorpion said, I will never just carry me. I need to cross over. Other animals have crossed. So the tortoise agreed. He carried the scorpion on its back and they were swimming. As they were getting to the end of the brink of the river, the scorpion stung the tortoise on the neck. The tortoise said, why did you sting me? He said, I'm sorry. It's my nature to sting. Whether you help me or you didn't help me, I must think. There are people, it is their nature to pay with evil. No matter the good you do for them. So don't be angry. Learn the lesson. Can I say this to you? Don't stop being kind. But be sensitive on who deserves your kindness. Hello? Some of you that are in relationship to get married, when we say do coaching first, you think we don't know what we are saying. We say study people, understand them, let them talk. Some people can be very nice and far off. Engage them in conversation, you will know that they are empty. So you prevent, you prevent disaster. Engage. Have a communication. Let them talk. There's someone I actually appreciated so much from afar. And yesterday we got talking. I just asked him two, three questions. The answer he gave me, I, I just sized him. I said, this one, mm, no get sense. I just threw a question, threw another question. And the answer they gave me was, I said, okay, okay, da, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I said, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Someone was in church on Sunday, saw me, said, I came to submit to you. I said, your son, I said, wonderful. I said, ministry, he said, fine. How is this? He said, fine. How is that? I said, fine. I said, there's something I want you, I want you to read. Open to the book of Abraham, chapter 6. Oh, God was looking for Abraham. Looking for Abraham. I said, what are you looking for? He said, chapter 6, Abi. I said, you have Abraham in your Bible? He said, yes, now. Chapter 6. I said, I can't father you. He said, you are my father. I said, that was your mother. <laughs> I told him clearly, I said, no, you need to study some more. Size people up. Many, many of us, we gave our heart to things too fast. That was why, that's why we felt the crash. Amen. Amen. People's actions shouldn't change you. It should reveal a dimension of you that you didn't know existed. People's character should change you. People's action and ill treatment shouldn't change you. It should reveal a dimension of you you never knew existed. Some of you will never know how strong you can be. How you'll be able to take to heart many betrayers until people show their true color. You'll be so shocked that you, you saw what they did, you saw what they did, and yet you are calm, you are normal. It means that you have capacity. So the treatment you get from people is to improve your capacity. Amen. It's to improve your capacity. When people come around, you see, do you know? Do you know the reason why people pretend around some of us? It's because we can't take people for who they are. Yeah. It is better to make mistakes than to fake perfection. It is better.
better to make mistakes than to what? To fake perfection. So when people are around you, let them, let them make the mistakes. Let people be themselves. So manage losses. In life, you will lose things. 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 It's not a prophecy of doom. It's a reality of life. People will walk out of your life for no just reason. Business opportunity will be shot against you despite your prayer. It's a reality of life. You put money into some businesses and you may not see returns. It's the reality of life. When you prepare your heart not to be hot, no matter what is thrown at you, despite all the losses, you still live a life of joy. Can I hear a loud amen? Can I hear another loud amen? Can I hear the loudest amen? But you know the good news? Even if you have lost anything, you have not lost everything. Even if you have lost anything, you have not lost everything. You lost marriage, you not lost. In fact, in my own estimation, there are actually no losses. Because what you lost in one way, you gain in another way. There are some marriages you may lose to save your life. Oh, you're not getting me. There are marriages some people may lose to save their life. There are some relationships some people will lose to get back their blood pressure. There are some... <laughs> There are some business opportunities and business partners you lose to get back your sanctity spiritually. Because so long they are in your life, your spiritual life is shaken. There are some people that walk out of your life so you get back your spirituality. There are people that so long they are in your life, you are watching your back. You, you are not at peace. So God will take them and restore back your peace. So to me, there isn't, once you are with God, there is no really actual losses. God takes away what you want and gives you what you need. Can I allow the man? Tell somebody manage losses. To stay joyful, be ready to manage losses. Say that again. Say that again. Say that one more time. I think if you study your Bible, you discover that every man that was great lost something. Adam lost his son. Are you aware? Adam lost his son, Abel. He lost his son. Abraham got to a point, he had to make a decision. God said, send Haggai away. Abraham sent his first biological son, which was Ishmael. Abraham sent his son away. Because Abraham is not the father of Ishmael. I've said that before. Abraham is not the father of Ishmael. Abraham is the father of Ishmael. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what did you think I was about to say? Abraham is not the father of Ishmael. Who is the father of Ishmael? Abraham. Abraham. Not Abraham. When he gave birth to Ishmael, he was called Abraham. When God changed his name to Abraham, he was a new person. That is why when God said, sacrifice Isaac, he said, take thy son, thy only son. Amen. No. You know this, but they will cut only that first part. They will, they will not add this last part. Hey, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. Another one. Apostle Sidman, I've talked another one again. No. Apostle, I've talked another one. No. Like, share, comment. Like, share, comment. Like, share, comment. Apostle, I've talked another one again. No. My people, my people, my people, my people, my people. Me could not come more. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I 
imagine? What have they turned church to? Especially those, you know those ladies they have sacked from work. <laughs> those elderly ladies that husband left them, children left them, work left them. So Facebook is not their partner. <laughs> ah, those people can be very funny. Yeah, how can pastor? That's why not they go to church again. No, that's why me I stopped church. They actually sent her away from church. They drove her. Church was tired. <laughs> I wish God gives us the right. There are some people who just will stand in front of the door as they're coming. <laughs> Amen. So Abraham lost. So do you know? Can I surprise you? As it were, even God lost his son. For God so loved the world that he gave. But do you know that son he lost? Has brought many sons to glory. Anything it appears you lose is coming back multiplied. Understand that. You may not feel good when you lose it. You may not feel happy at the loss. Ah! But it's coming back. Understand? If you have experienced any form of loss, it is actually good. It's coming back. Sometimes. See, eh? when you grow up around people, and God gives you a dream. You grow up around them. You are with them. You are talking with them. You are in their midst. Your dream will not be valued. Yes, ask Joseph. His dream was not valued so long he was in the midst of his brothers. So God took him out from his brothers. Prepared him in Egypt. Made him great. Those same brothers who were in the same house with him saw him years later and came and bowed down to him. That's the irony of life. People value and respect what is scarce. What is far from them. People don't value what is close to them. It's like, for example, there are people in this church, you see me every time, you see me every Sunday. The papa, this is not Papa. I beg you. But you can see a pastor who you don't have access to and celebrate that person. It's normal. Someone went from this church, went to meet a man of God and said, Pray for me, I'm having challenges. The man of God prayed for the person and said, Trump is serving God, go to church. So where do you go? Where do you worship? The person mentioned Omega Fire Ministries. He said, Oh. Ah. Which branch is the headquarters? Ha! Are you a worker? He mentioned department. Ha! He said, Why are you shouting? That's my papa! You came here for yeah, out, 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 come back. Now, when he told me, I said, No, no. You would have prayed for the person. I said, It's just it's just the way life is wired. As a woman, that's your husband, you see. You call Papa Boniface, Papa Bomboy, Papa Boniface. There's somebody else that is eyeing him. That's your wife. That's your wife. You see her. You don't call her patient. You call her busy, busy, busy. You have no value for <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> we are all, it's only natural for us. What we have access to, we don't place value on. This altar. Somebody else will come and walk by this altar ten times. He will mop the altar. Yes, someone will be in America, London, and say, if I can get to that altar, I'll be healed. It's a process. And it's a mindset of value. Am I communicating now? Number two, if you must live a joyful life, the first thing I said, I said number one, you must what? Learn to manage losses. 